In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And today, my dear friends, as we come, come to celebrate this Eucharist and listening to the Word of God, the psalmist's response today is that, Oh, that today you would listen to the voice of God. Do not harden your hearts. My dear friends, let us listen to this advice from the psalmist and let us open our hearts and minds to listening to the sweet voice of God. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery in a worthy manner by recalling to our own minds our own unworthiness, our own sinfulness, and ask for God's pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, bless Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you 
with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people. He said, The Lord your God will raise you up, a prophet like me from among your own kin. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb. On the day of the assembly when you said, Let me not hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, lest I die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own kin. I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them everything that I commanded him. Anyone who does not heed the words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will hold him accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded him to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, our response shall be, O oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord, do not harden your hearts. O oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord, do not harden your hearts. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving, let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. O oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord, do not harden your hearts. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord, do not harden your hearts. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massa in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me, and put me to the proof though they had seen my work. O oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord, do not harden your hearts. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. The unmarried woman and the virgin are concerned about the affairs of the Lord, so that they may be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is concerned about the affairs of the world, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to put any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples went to Capernaum, and when Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing the man and crying with a loud voice came out of him. All were amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, that today you would hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. The response to the psalm invites us to open our hearts to listen to God speaking in the silence of our hearts. I always experienced and believe that in the silence of the heart, we hear the voice of God the loudest. It takes a lot of practice, self-discipline, to turn off, to let go, or to stop the other voices in this noise-filled modern world. Reflecting on these words, Pope Francis has this wisdom to share. He questions, when a people, a community closes its ears and becomes deaf to the word of God, it seeks other voices, other lords, and it ends up involving idols, the idols which the world or worldliness and society offer then we become distant from the living God. So he invites us, each of us today can ask himself or herself, do I stop to listen to the word of God? Do I take the Bible in my hands? And is God talking to me? And has my heart become hardened? Have I distanced myself from the Lord? Have I lost my faithfulness to the Lord? And do I live with the idols that everyday worldliness offers? Have I lost the joy of the marvel of the first encounter with Jesus? Today, my dear friends, our liturgy invites us and again and again to open our hearts to listen to God's voice. So let us ask for this grace, the grace to listen so that our hearts may not be hardened. 
as this year we reflect on the call to holiness and at the same time because of the public health we are asked to stay home let us make the best use of our time we invite you to read the word of god read the bible and to spend some time alone in reflecting on the word of god maybe sometimes it helps to good to turn off those cell phones or tv or any other noise generating devices that can hinder our conversations with god we also when we sit down to pray or read bible or sometimes do good work we know that how many distractions distractions come our way so let us not give up but let us practice again and again with that perseverance of listening to god's voice let us encounter jesus in the reading and listening to jesus speaking to us let us some spend time in a retreat with the guidance of the holy spirit today in the scriptures we hear that how moses gave his testimony of speaking with god his struggles and his hope for the people saint paul also advises us to free us from the anxieties of the world when we let go or free ourselves from the worldly worries stresses and concerns then we can as saint paul says promote good order in our life in our family and community and become be unhindered devotion to the lord let us listen to jesus listening to jesus is not easy as jesus today uh, challenges us ch- asks us to change our life change our attitudes and our behaviors and in the gospel we heard um, the man who was healed from the unclean spirit he was in the synagogue listening to jesus healing begins with listening and paying attention to ourselves and to jesus by listening as we would say that our inner demons would come out and so well by listening that uh, this man's inner demons came out and because he knew that he was in a holy place and speaking to a holy person holiness brings healing and the authority of jesus comes from being holy being in that holy place and speaking to the holy one and as uh, this man gave the testimony saying to jesus i know who you are you are the holy one of god my dear friends during these difficult days that we are experience that we pray and support one another so that we may not lose sight of jesus the holy one of god when we center our life on jesus we can focus and hope in god's help we pray and support those who are struggling with many inner demons of addictions to worldly pleasures that bring harm to themselves and destroy family relationships and public life we also pray and support those who minis- whose ministry is to bring healing to others in our family and community those who work many jobs to survive and to provide support to their family and back home those who are working in the hospitals nursing homes those who work in the essential services and especially 
we pray and support those who work in caring for the poor and the marginalized. Let us listen to God and echo God's voice to all. Let me conclude with this beautiful story uh, about uh, uh, being related to God. There is a story of an elderly woman who owned a bakery. One day, she saw a young skinny boy hungrily looking at baked goods. Moved with pity and compassion, she approached him and learned about the sudden death of his parents, which led him to go to survive on begging. She told him, Come, I will give you a good meal and will see to that that you are sent to school. Taking the boy, she fed him to the fullest, which he never had been, overwhelmed with all the emotions that he was experiencing and all that was happening to him, the boy asked the lady, Are you God? The elderly woman smilingly said, You could say that I am God's child. The little boy replied, I guessed correctly. I knew you were related to God. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Do not harden your hearts. Amen. The Profession of Faith I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Believing in a God who invites us to listen to him, let us put before our God all our prayers and intentions. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church speaking with God's loving authority, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders to act with integrity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who face the future with fear or uncertainty, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, gather to hear and put into action God's healing love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Gracious and loving Father, we offer you all these prayers and those prayers buried deep in our hearts. We offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed Blessed be be God God forever. forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in you may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and, and glory, glory of God's name, name for, for our, our good and good of all parts of the Church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just of a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, Jesus brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy and the entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, a spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all your saints who are pleased throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, to set your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, but Lord, always say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us during this celebration of the liturgy. 
and during these days we celebrate uh, and we ask you to pray uh, and support for vocations as we celebrate the nine days in preparation for the presentation of Jesus, uh, the feast that is will be held on the 2nd of February and invite you to pray for more vocations to religious life and on the, the 2nd of February at 7 o'clock evening mass uh, we will be having a live stream mass, a virtual mass. I invite you to join for that and to pray for more vocations and pray for religious men and women. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and joy of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Blessings to you and to your family. And do not forget to smile.